I was married for 13 years and have two young children. After a tough divorce, I remarried a wonderful woman named Donna. My ex-wife constantly harasses me, making co-parenting a nightmare. Despite the challenges, I fought for my kids, and now, after years of struggle, they live with me, thriving academically and emotionally. Original Post, August 24, 2016 I don't know where to begin. I was married for 13 years. Have two mall children 4 and 6. And after being divorced I am now remarried to a wonderful woman, Donna. My ex will not stop harassing me. I have to communicate with her for the kids. But it is so contentious that the court finally ordered all communication go through an online site, and I had to change my phone number and move. It was that bad. I had my kids this weekend. Things went great and I went and saw my family. No incidents, we had a great time. Then I got this email. Email. Jill and Marvin, kids, report that they were in a traffic accident with you this weekend, in the truck. They both report that the loud, obscene exchange between their father and the ABC towing driver scared them. They both report that they were bitten by Greg's dog, Murphy, during their visit at your folks' house this weekend. This is the second dog they have both reported biting them. I have also posted their reports that they have been bitten by a large dog named Betsy, at your in-law's house. They have traumatic memories of metal being scraped out of your leg. I hope that you recover and damp, get back to your job quickly. I hope that Donna is okay. They report that you have trouble walking. This is consistent with behavior I observed at drop-off on Sunday night, you didn't get out of your new car, and it appeared very awkward for you to unbuckle their booster seat belts from the driver's seat. I need to know about these things, please. Dog bites are notoriously dirty and prone to infections. Just because our children didn't appear to be as seriously injured as you were in the truck accident, doesn't mean that they couldn't be stiff and sore and possibly have internal injuries for which I need to be observing. At least I need to understand why they were stiff and sore and acting more fearful than usual when they came home. Their mild to moderate bruising and scrapes, and the chunks of skin missing from their hands and fingers, are consistent with their reports of the accident and the dog bites. I will take Jill and Marvin to the pediatrician walk-in clinic to rule out any unseen injuries and infections. It would be nice if you would call or email the doctor's office, and tell them what you can about the accident and the dog bites. It could help rule out tests and treatments that might not be necessary. It would also be nice if you would pay your half of their medical expenses, especially because the accident and the dog bites happened when they were with you. Today is Jill's first day of school. I could have taken them to the doctor two days ago, if you had shared that they were bitten and in a traffic accident that was bad enough required a tow truck for the truck, and medical care for you. If you want to drive the kids to Santa Barbara and back in a weekend, expose them to animals that aren't safe for children, and fight with tow truck drivers in front of them, I cannot prevent that. But what happens to their little, growing bodies, and the events that are being imprinted on their sweet, innocent minds, is very much my business. Please share all of the information regarding what happened to our children in the truck accident. Please share all of the information regarding the bites from the dogs. As a mother, it is very worrisome to hear my preschooler and my first grader recount the dangerous things that are happening to them, but it is even more worrisome that my co-parent withholds vital information about their health. Jill and Marvin deserve to know that their parents are working together to take care of them. Thank you. Rest of the post. I don't even know where to begin. The dog that was there had no teeth. Didn't bite them. And couldn't have even if it wanted to. My in-law's dog is dead. I was never in an accident. There was no tow truck. All of this is false. I can't even find a shred of a real event that could have gotten twisted. This comes on the heels of four days ago, her trying to corner me into signing away 30% of my custody agreement, and refusing to let me even look at the details of the paperwork. I am so frazzled by all of this that, at times, I think about signing away my parental rights just to not have the stress. But I don't want my children thinking I don't care for them and abandon them. How do you reason with this level of crazy? Any advice is welcome. I need help managing this. TL, doctor trying to deal with a crazy ex, and barely holding it together for the sake of the kids. Relevant comments, from legal advice and relationships. Commenter, why are you so cowed by your ex-wife that are telling you to sign something you don't want to sign causes you stress? It shouldn't be that hard to say no. Oop, that is a brief snapshot. When it's every day, or every other day. It gets stressful. I never know what accusation is going to be lobbed at me next. When they divorced. Two years ago. To a deleted comment. Yeah. I already spent almost all of my savings to get the custody agreement I have. Dropping another 20k would be tough. To pay for I'd have to pick up another job, 
which would then not allow me to access the custody I am wanting. Commenter, turn this over to your lawyer. Please fight this fight. I know it is hard but can you imagine growing up with a mother who chooses to rewrite history and reality to suit her whims? Oop, lawyers have been contacted. No response in three days, emailed with this craziness this morning. Still crickets. Commenter, their mild to moderate bruising and scrapes, and the chunks of skin missing from their hands and fingers, are consistent with their reports of the accident and the dog bites. So do these things not exist or what? Oop, I didn't see anything. A scrape on the foot from the flip-flop one was wearing but other than that. Nothing. Commenter, how does Donna feel about all of this? Oop, pissed. It is a major source of conflict in our marriage. Actually it is just about the only thing we ever argue about. Update, four months later. Title, legal rights surrounding a primary custody parent who after four attempts is not picking up her children from me, the non-custodial parent, CA. I am in Southern California. I don't know what to do here. I am the non-custodial parent. I have had the kids for one week, four and six, during Christmas break. Due to the high conflict nature of my ex we have been assigned a co-parenting person to help mediate. On the 30th we were supposed to exchange the kids back to her care. I showed up 15 minutes early to the location, and we waited for one HR and seven minutes before giving up and leaving. She had been claiming she was right there for over 35 minutes, the location was an IHOP, 300 feet from the freeway exit. After I left I got a slew of messages calling me all sorts of names, and claiming that she had just showed up, but that I had left. This song and dance has happened before, she said she would meet me anywhere, just to let her know where. This time I called her bluff and picked a location two miles from my home, and told her, the kids are hungry and tired of waiting. I'm taking them to my house, when you arrive at the location, 11 miles from the IHOP, text me and let me know, and I'll bring them right over. I sent her the location five times in text and twice via email. 4.5 hours later. Nothing. I then told her that we could meet at the agreed upon location at 11 a.m. the next day for the exchange, just one day later than planned. When I woke up by the morning she demanded I drive them one hour to a new location, because she had a 103 degree fever and couldn't drive. There of course was a back and forth about her ability to care for children if she was too sick to drive. Ultimately she failed to arrive at the location at 11 a.m. At 5 p.m. I got a doctor's note stating that she only had a cold as was fine to care for the children. I didn't ask for this. I then called her and we had a heated back and forth, but ultimately I relented and told her that I would bring them to a location that she chose. One hour away and one mile from her house. Under the agreement that she would show up this time. Before leaving I sent an email confirming the location and time. That was sent at 7.48 p.m. We arrived at the location at 8.51 p.m. and texted to let her know we were there. What happened next was so frustrating. No response to any text was ever given. Every time I would send a text, I would get an email. All of them stating the same thing. That she would not leave her house until I verified my location. I sent her six different responses to emails telling her where I was. All I would get in response is more messages asking me to confirm my location. I even made a phone call telling her where I was. Unfortunately at this point I was in such disbelief I did yell at her and tell her to get her ass down here. Not my finest hour. At 10.21 p.m. With kids in high anxiety and crying that their mom had forgotten them again, we left and drove the hour back home. I have now messages accusing me of child abduction. I don't know what to do. I am not subjecting my kids to this again. I can't bear to watch them check every car, and get excited I think I see her. Over and over again for hours while she plays these games. My worry is that the cops are going to come knock down my door. When I have done everything I can to make these exchanges work. Is this enough to have my lawyers file an emergency hearing to get primary custody? I am in limbo right now since neither my lawyers or the co-parenting person will be in the office until the third. TL, Dr. Mother has missed four exchanges in two days. What are my legal rights in this situation? Relevant comments. Commenter, why can't you just drop the kids off at her house if she's not feeling well enough to drive? It sounds like she's playing games and you're letting her. Oop. She has told me over and over again not to come to her house, under any circumstance. Commenter, was the mediator alerted to this situation when it was occurring? If not, why not? Oop, she doesn't check her email or phone over the weekend. Commenter, keep the kids, stop dealing with her shit and file for full emergency custody this week. Oop, she is now stating that she is 5 miles away, waiting for me to deliver the kids. This was not pre-arranged. Update 2, 6 months later. Editor's note, 
Thanks to mods for helping me recover this. Title, California, not sure what my options are with a crazy ex-wife scenario. Literally. I am in the process of a 730 evaluation for primary custody of my kids. Two kids 7 and 5 today, was another doozy of an exchange. And I am fearful for the kids. I don't know what my options are here, if any. My ex was 53 minutes late to the exchange today. At 4.24 she sent me a text stating she was exiting the freeway that is 2 miles from the meeting spot arranged in co-parenting for today. She doesn't show up until 4.53. Exchange goes okay. But I know something is coming, because if she is ever in the wrong she has to lash out and blame someone else or invent a scenario where she is the victim. I had to wait all of 4 minutes. I got a text stating I just drove by your car, and the back seat was empty. Where are the kids? I said wasn't my car. I have two kids then knowing where this was going sent a picture of them in the car. Response, when did you have time to take this? Because I had plenty of time to look at the stoplight. You were alone. It's okay if Donna, my current wife, has them. It's totally legal, just weird to hide it. I then called her. She answered. I said. Hi, she said hi, and then I asked the kids to say hi. I then asked the kids where are we at kids? At this point she started saying hello, hello? Is there anyone there? I then got a text, thank you for the phone call. But there was no sound. I responded. I am turning off my phone now. These accusations are bizarre. I got back, not as bizarre as pretending to pick up our kids. Just tell me who has them. I called again. Immediately with the hello? Hello? I knew for sure it was a game at this point. I just ended the call. She responded you can't just keep ending conversations because you don't want to deal with the facts. If this turns into another 49-hour abduction like New Year's, I will definitely filing a report, read the last post on that incident here. This is next level insane. I am terrified for the kids. This is like raising to the level that she needs to be committed. Thoughts apart from just continuing with the psych eval I already have going? Relevant comment. Oop, we went back to family court. Court ordered a psych evaluation. That process is about 6 months. We are 1 month into that. Update 3, 2.5 years later. Okay I want to give the timeline so people understand the full issue I am up against. Basically my children were hidden from me for 55 hours during my parenting time. Their location and the whole situation. Well I was lied to about the whole time. Been divorced 5 years. 30% custody exchange was to be December 28th 12pm for my half of Christmas break. Timeline December 26th. 4 p.m. get a picture of where they are spending Christmas, X and two kids 9 and 7, showing large snowfall and a message saying they are not sure when the snow plows will start. December 27, 12 p.m. another picture and message stating same thing, except in the picture you can tell cars have left and come back from first picture. 6 p.m., I tell her, if you get out tonight, I'll come get the kids as planned, in court order, from your house, 12 p.m. December 28th, If you do not get out until the morning do you want to just bring them by my house, on the way from where she is coming from, dash I get a thumbs up to that message. 8 p.m. I ask if she got out. No response. December 28th 9 a.m. I ask for a status update so I know if I need to drive the hour to her house. No response. 10 20 a.m. I ask again for an update. No response. 11 a.m. I leave to drive the hour for exchange, not knowing info. 12 p.m. Exchange time, arrive at house. Text that I have arrived. Her car is there. Her mom's car is not, she lives with her mom, I videotape the time on the vehicle verbally notate the time and date. Show her car in the darkened house on the videotape, I assume she has driven up with her mom to where she is snowed in. 12.10pm finally get a response saying they are still snowed in. No plows yet. 4pm I offer that since my parents are driving down and they have a large truck they could swing by and get the kids on their way to my house tomorrow. No response until the next day. Note, I check all roads in the area. All are showing being open, and flowing traffic. I even verify with live traffic cams form half mile from where she is that roads are cleared and cars are driving. I have screenshots of this and the video is time stamped. December 29th 8am she declines this and says we should stick to orders she also tells me her internet is out. December 29th 11 a.m. I contact the police about child abduction. I tell them the story. They say here is an incident number, we are not going to open a case on this. Take it up with the court. 4 p.m. I get a message saying freeways closing down for the night. Been driving every back road looking for entrances without frozen bridges or backed up with accidents. 
It's an hour wait every time I fill up. Everybody's sure it'll be better tomorrow. Signals are better at least. I respond asking her to tell me when she leaves. Note. No freeways or highways are shut down. I check all state and local websites to verify. Even check Twitter and local live camera feeds. December 30th 8am call my lawyers. Tell them what is going on. Send them all of the timeline and they say they will reach out to her attorney. 1pm. They finally get in touch with her attorney and the response back is that she is leaving today, that she will message me when she does, and I can come and get the kids from her place. 2pm I ask for an update from my ex. 4.45pm still having gotten no communication I call my lawyers again. They call her lawyer. I finally get a response. I have left that's all. 6pm get a message I am home, you can come get them. 7pm 55 hours past exchange, I get the kids I ask them about the snow and being stuck. I was not trying to pry information or grill them, just casual light conversation. They tell me that they have been at home for 3 days. Since the night of the 27th. Now I am asking some more pointed questions. I ask about what car they drove, they are kids, maybe the timeline is wrong, they say they were in their mom's car because grandma had to leave on Christmas day to be back home, so they drove separately. They say that mom said I told her she could keep them for two more days. I am furious. It was all lies. I am contacting lawyers today. But what are my options here? I want to have a reasonable expectation walking into this. My stance right now is, I need action and need someone else to be as posed about this as I am, or I'll find a lawyer who is. But I do realize my emotions are elevated. Additional note, in the last two years I have filed a 730. Spent 12k on it. Two year process. Basically it said I am the better parent, but that she might be improving, and that his suggestion would be to wait a year and do another 730 and if things haven't improved by then, it would be appropriate to swap me to primary custody. That report was produced in April this year. Update 4, 8 years from OG post I took everything to heart and implemented several things right away. I became a grey rock. And started documenting my ass off. I consulted my lawyers, and they said they advised several steps. The first of which was a 730 evaluation. This is an evaluation done by a psychologist, that process took a really long time as the 730 evaluator got very sick halfway through. That took 10 months. At the end the report essentially read mom is volatile and disorganized and that dad's home would be a more stable home for the children. However, there is hope that mom is starting to improve, so if things are still bad in one year it would be appropriate to change custody to dad. This was a tough pill to swallow. Things were not better, and the chaos was just intermittent. So we just kept documenting, and doing our thing. Eventually, we started getting a lot of emails from teachers that Jill in particular, was often not bathed, never had her homework done, didn't have school supplies and that she was falling way behind in her studies. We applied for a trial to review custody, and asked for primary custody to be swapped to us. That was at the end of 2019, and trial was set for May 2020. So as you can imagine, once COVID hit, everything got delayed. There was a large amount of events in 2020. COVID shut down. Donna and I had a child, Rebecca. And then my ex started denying visitation to Jill and Marvin. Every two weeks I would go down. Wait in front of the house. No kids would emerge. Sometimes I would have the police come, not to force anything, but to get the documentation in terms of a case number. This went on for four months, before I was able to start getting visitation again. Eventually, the trial was set for summer of 2021 and went for three days and I had over 500 pages of documentation. Day one was entirely testimony from the co-parenting therapist we had been seeing for five years. She testified that my ex was the most difficult client she had ever worked with in her career, that my ex never followed a single agreement in session, and that she was a pathological liar. Last day of testimony was my ex, where she was caught lying on the stand, and was presented with evidence that she had been secretly taking the children to a medical professional for two years that I had explicitly not agreed to. So starting in August 2021, the judge ordered the kids come live with me, primary custody and limiting my ex to four days a month. It's now been three years, when Jill was in fifth grade she had a 26% in math, and a 40% in English. For the last three years, she has maintained a 4.0 every single year, and will be starting high school in honors geometry, honors English and AP biology. Marvin has also been doing well also and just finished his first year of middle school with a 4.0 GPA, and is loving his coding and robotics elective. They have new clothes, and have learned new skills and responsibilities. Donna has been crucial in setting up patterns to help with success in school. Their rooms are both immaculate, 
and they are the ones doing it with very little direction from us. They are happy and finally involved in activities and sports. Our little Rebecca adores them both, and I will often find all three of them cuddled up together as one of the older two reads a book to her. Jill made the decision recently to stop going on visits to her mom. The chaos and drama started being directed at her. Along with lack of food, clothes that fit, etc. Marvin is still going for visits and we are encouraging that as long as he is feeling safe there. All in all things are going so well and the kids are doing incredible. There are hard moments still, but it has all been worth it, and we are able to shield them for the most part from any chaos their mom may want to start. If anyone is reading this that initially sent advice. Thank you. When you are in the thick of it, it is tough to not feel like it is impossible and you will never be able to overcome it. I needed the outside perspective. TL, doctor update to a post about considering giving up custody of my kids, to fighting for them for years. Eventually getting custody and turning all of our lives around for the better. Relevant comment. Commenter, cheered when I heard both the kids got their grades up. You've set them on the right path sir. Good work. Oop, thanks. We knew they had the ability. It is amazing what can happen when kids have support with HW, and a routine to follow every day. Soon they start believing in themselves and then setting their own lofty goals. Jill has dreams of becoming an investigative journalist. Marvin would like to become a nuclear engineer.